नमस्ते दोस्तों भारत स्पीक्स विद टीम न्यूज आवर में मैं आपका होस्ट अमित भाटिया आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत करता हूं आज हमारे साथ जुड़े हैं जर्नलिस्ट विजय क्रांति जी जो कि तिब्बत चाइना और लद्दाख अफेयर्स में ही इज एन एक्सपर्ट काफी सालों का एक्सपीरियंस है इनको एंड वी आर ऑनर टू हैव हिम विद अस और मेरे साथी भूपेंद्र सिंह जी जो कि मेरा साथ देंगे इस इंटरेक्शन में आज क्योंकि विजय जी हमारे साथ हैं तो आई थिंक वी विल द डिस्कशन विल बी बेस्ड ऑन चाइना तिब्बत एंड इवन विल टच अपॉन अ बिट ऑन द जियो पोलिटिकल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ दिस रीजन सो थैंक यू सो मच विजय सर फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस uh we can start yes so uh sir mera pehla prashn ye rahega ki abhi haal hi mein humne dekha ki dalai lama jo hain wo ladakh gaye the to between all these uh, tough times or jo bhi pichle 1 1.5 saal se chal raha hai hamara galwan ke time se ya usse pehle dekh le hum doklam ke time se to इसकी क्या सिग्निफिकेंस है दलाई लामा जी का जो ये विजिट है व्हाट काइंड ऑफ सिग्नलिंग डज इट सेंड इफ यू कुड जस्ट ब्रीफ अस अ बिट अबाउट दैट या यू नो दलाई लामा विजिट टू लद्दाख इज नॉट ए अनकॉमन थिंग और समथिंग वेरी वेरी स्पेशल और इट्स नॉट लिंक टू व्हाट एवर हैज हैपेंड इन लद्दाख रिसेंटली बिकॉज़ एज़ वी ऑल नो दैट दलाई लामा इज लिविंग इन इंडिया since 1949 and uh, he has been stationed at dharmsala uh, a, a year after that when he arrived in india so since then he has been living in dharmsala he has been traveling to many parts of india and specially uh, in, in past two or three decades uh, the lainama has uh, made a you can say it's a kind of calendar event because uh, depending upon his comfort you know dharmsala is one of the rainiest places uh, in india and uh, in the days of uh, monsoon it becomes quite inconvenient so because the dalai lama has uh, many uh, you know schedules and responsibilities to travel around so he has uh, uh, evolved a, a kind of uh, calendar uh, practically every year in the days of uh, monsoon he spends a good part of it in ladakh because in ladakh the monsoon is not very difficult and uh, secondly this place uh, the uh, the weather climate etc is very close to his original home tibet so it is in these period these days uh, you know june july august when he visits ladakh uh, quite frequently but over past two years because of the covid 19 situation when movements were res- restricted so he has uh, uh, he has not been visiting ladakh but this year because things have eased so he has restarted his uh, old schedules and uh, that is one of the basic reasons that this time in july and august uh, dalai lama is living is is staying in uh, ladakh and he is at choglam sir where uh, there is a huge settlement of tibetan uh, refugees and there they have uh, enough of facilities a very beautiful a very well laid out uh, public ground where he gives preachings and it has been a tradition that uh, those people who love to listen to him who are his disciples who uh enjoy his uh, talks so they travel from all over the world to ladakh in these days and it becomes a, almost like a festival so that was the reason why the dalai lama is in uh, in ladakh his visit is going to conclude in a couple of days and but at the same time this year uh, this visit has uh, gained a very specific political significance because in the past uh, two years things have not been normal in ladakh there has been uh, 
uh, a, a lot of uh, military movement uh, because of China's uh, sudden aggressive uh, postures and uh, the unfortunate event in Galwan, uh, which was initiated by China or Chinese army. So that has drawn world's attention to Ladakh. And that is why the Lama's visit to Ladakh this year is being uh, is is getting more noticed, but there is surely a political significance because uh, uh, all his visits are somehow uh, you know not I would not use term governed, but uh, there is a very active coordination between of uh, according uh, to his visits between uh, his establishment and the government of India. And this time, uh, because Indian government has uh, permitted and made arrangements for his uh, stay there, uh, obviously, there are many political uh, meanings of that. And one meaning is that government of India has, uh, by, uh, by permitting Dalai Lama uh, to go to Ladakh, uh, Indian government has given an indication to China that Dalai Lama is uh, a very important figure and a very important factor in relations uh, between uh, India and China. Thank you, sir. Uh, Vijay, sir. I will tell you one more question that this year the Dalai Lama has मिलिट्री uh, हेलीकॉप्टर में भी घुमाया गया है लद्दाख एरिया में और इस बात को पेपर्स ने काफी छापा है तो एक तो इसके बारे में आप क्या बताएंगे एंड सेकंडली व्हाट इज द रोल ऑफ दलाई लामा सिंस ही केम टू इंडिया इन 1950 से लेके अब तक उनका एक क्या रोल रहा है थोड़ी सी उनकी जीवन के ऊपर थोड़ी जानकारी हमको देंगे थैंक यू <coughs> You know, uh, Dalai Lama's uh, visit to Ladakh, if uh, the government of India or Indian army offers a helicopter visit to Dalai Lama, one thing is there is nothing abnormal about it. Uh, after all, Dalai Lama is the state guest of India. And uh, wherever he travels in India, the government of India provides uh, all the facilities which are due to a, a guest of the rank of head of state. So even in Delhi, when he is visiting Delhi, uh, you know, he travels in a car which has the emblem of Rashtrapati Bhavan, which is a part of the protocol uh, which has been going on since the day he arrived in India. So there is nothing new as far as hospitality is concerned. In Ladakh, uh, it is not that it's a question of uh, offering helicopter, uh, even if it is a helicopter belonging to the Indian Air Force or Indian Army. Uh, it is the responsibility of the host uh, government, including the central government and the government of Ladakh, to provide security, comfort, and all necessary hospitality when he is there man, and when he is traveling. Because as I understand, he one of his uh, visits uh, from Ladakh Leh was to Zanskar, which is a very distant place and which is not easy to reach uh, comfortably by road. And it's quite a long distance. So it was obvious that you know, seeing the, the, the age of uh, Dalai Lama and uh, the distance and the comfort and his status, uh, the Indian uh, army provided its helicopter. So it's a very common thing and there is no political uh, issue or any political significance to be attached to this. It's a part of hospitality. So there is nothing, I don't think there is any any other uh, element or any, you know, anybody is trying to read the crystal. I don't think there is anything big to read uh, out of it. Uh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, my question, uh, the uh, second question which I asked that, uh, what is I, I the role? I I have some nose uh, problem today. No problem. So, no problem. so uh, what is the role of Dalai Lama you see since 1950 till now? Because uh, as we know that Dalai Lama is a very good orator and he has a, a very good say at the international uh, political level. 
uh, as you see whenever he meets the president of usa and uh, other people uh, in the uh, worldwide scenario so uh, we want to know like what role he has played so far as far as the china is concerned or as far as the international uh, uh, politics uh, which as a, uh, india want its foreign policy against tibet and china so what role he has actually played uh, we want to know a little bit about it you know dalai lama arrived in india uh, particularly his now his stay as a refugee it started in 1959 in uh, early april 1959 he arrived in india uh, because he had to run away from uh, tibet because there was an uprising of tibetan people against the chinese uh, army rule over tibet and against chinese uh, occupation of tibet by china Uh, which was crushed by the chinese army with a very very heavy hand if you go to the records of united nations uh, you will find that uh, the chinese army had uh, killed more than 80000 i repeat 80000 tibetans were killed by the chinese army to crush this uprising of tibetan people in lhasa and uh, that was uh, discussed all the world over and because the dalai lama's life was in danger and china wanted to arrest him so that is why he escaped from uh, lhasa and he took about 17 days to walk through some of the most difficult regions uh, of, of the earth you know very high mountain peaks through the snow and uh, many other uh, problems and but he managed to successfully arrive in india in arunachal pradesh which was called nepal at that time <clears throat> so after coming to india he has been um, he first lived for a short time in masuri and then the government of india made arrangements for his uh, longer stay in dharmsala from the next year so since then he is living there uh, in uh, 70s he started late 70s or early 80s he started traveling and especially when he has been traveling abroad Uh, we notice that the dalai lama has uh, become one of the most popular statesmen uh, during his uh, international visits he has been visiting so many countries uh, european countries america uh, north american countries and many other countries where he has been received very respectfully he has been invited to dozens of uh, parliaments to for to listen to him and uh, he received standing ovations in huge congregations of people you know which were organized in i have witnessed uh, a, a couple of those uh, congregations in germany you know where he were there are the full in germany australia i have seen that uh, olympic uh, olympics level uh, stadiums uh, were the venue and they were overflowing always so that shows his pro- uh, popularity when he meets uh, heads of states uh, he is uh, uh, not only in news but he is also on the focus of china's rebuke and chinese government goes practically mad loses its cool and uh, all the civic behavior whenever he meets some head of state whether it's president of uh, america or prime ministers of any other country so that is very common but uh, one thing is sure that the dalai lama has uh, gained a very special stature on the international uh, platforms which makes him very popular if you go by the the the, the charts of popularity from across the world i think for last 20 30 years when you see the popular the chart of popular people across the world he is always in the top 1 2 3 places and uh, you know and he maintains it in spite of uh, china's opposition so that shows his stature and uh, his popularity uh, besides political reasons is also because of his uh, faith in uh, non violence and uh, ahimsa and at the same time his own concept of universal responsibility which has attracted millions of people across the world and then there are other millions who have uh, developed their faith in uh, the buddhist philosophy 
and he symbolizes that as supreme leader of uh, Buddhism. So that makes Dalai Lama very popular across the world. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, one very interesting question I want to ask you because as Dalai Lama is a very good orator at the international platform and uh, he has uh, been an asset to the Indian government since 1950 against China. So, as you know, uh, the issue of Karmapas, because after 16th Karmapa, uh, there is a lot of confusion going on uh, till now that there are two to three Karmapas residing in India itself. Now, uh, my question is, what will be the post Dalai Lama scenario? If Because uh, Dalai Lama's age is now 87 and His Holiness is uh, suffering from uh, uh, little uh, ailments also. <laughs> and... Um, uh, the question is, uh, like, what will be the post Dalai Lama scenario? Like, who is going to fill the vacuum after him? And how? what will be the role of Karmapa? Because Karmapa is also now a 24-year-old uh, person. Because when he came, he was very young. So do you think that Karmapa is going to overtake or there will be some other change in the scenario? Thank you. You know, one thing we, we should understand, uh, you know, the, the, the system, the Tibetan system, in and hierarchy uh as far as the Lai lama is concerned the Lai lama is the supreme in tibetan system supreme as the political ruler of tibet and also as the supreme spiritual leader of tibet and after uh, the Lai lama there are many other positions the very next position is panchen lama and panchen lama is uh, doesn't have political powers in the system but uh, after Dalai Lama, the second spiritual power belongs to Panchen Lama. On Panchen Lama issue, there has been controversy because uh, when the previous 10th Panchen Lama died in 1989, so after that, uh, the new Panchen Lama had to be uh, to found out. And as in, in, in Tibet, uh, all most of these uh, uh, Lamas, most of these uh, senior positions are not by inheritance uh, or uh, through elections or through any other uh, way of selection. M they are through incarnation. It is believed that after one senior uh, Lama dies, he is reborn somewhere. And his position goes to the next incarnation. The Tibetans have their way of finding the reincarnation who is a little baby. And Tibetans have their own way of identifying that child. So in the case of Panchen Lama, uh, the Chinese tried to, uh, to, because they wanted to occupy the position of Panchen Lama, so they initiated a team to find out the next Panchen Lama. China appointed uh, some senior monks, but uh, the whole committee was uh, presided over by a Communist Party officer of the Chinese Communist Party, and uh, which when they discovered one child, the monk members of that team very quietly they approached Dalai Lama in exile, gave him all the details of the new baby, uh, and Dalai Lama approved that child. And this team, rather than asking Beijing to give their approval to the child, the team directly announced that here we have the next Panchen Lama, and Dalai Lama has acknowledged. So that infuriated the Chinese. They were so angry that they arrested this child and his parents. And in, within two days, they found out another Tibetan child of uh, five year old and installed him as the next Panchen Lama. So this child who was six year old, Gedun Chuki Nima, he and his uh, parents who were arrested in 1995. So it's already 27 years and the word has yet to hear about the whereabouts or even uh, even if whether that child is alive or not. So China has installed Panchen Lama of its own choice. It's a different matter. The Tibetan people have not accepted it. Same thing, uh, Karmapa. Karmapa's position is, uh, with all due respect to the institution of Karmapa, but his uh, position as a, as a spiritual uh, leader is uh, uh, not that senior as Pan Panchen Lama or Dalai Lama. But he is very important. So uh, there has been controversy because there were two candidates. Uh, one was uh, installed by China, which got recognition from Dalai Lama. 
he has been living in uh, tibet under control of china but on the on the eve on the eve of uh, 2000 uh, new year he quietly escaped to india and joined the Lai lama since then he has been living there there has been a few problems about his stay in india so he is currently living somewhere in the west and uh, he is in that sense he is the most senior uh, uh, lama who is living in the free world so there are uh, discussions that he is going to play an important role after uh, the present dalai lama but uh, china is very keen to install its own choice of uh, uh, boy in place of dalai lama china has changed its own laws making all claims that uh, nobody on earth has any right to install the next dalai lama only the communist party of china has the right which sounds very funny but china is trying to do that but as far as uh, karmapa is concerned he holds very high position a lot of respect and there are chances that he will very soon uh, come back to india and uh, will start playing some role but it's uh, i think that's my personal opinion uh, there is hardly any uh, possibility that he can replace uh, the political role of dalai lama uh, but he will be a very highly respected uh, spiritual leader and uh, will i'm sure he has uh, he, he can play a good uh, role in uh, among the, the tibetan uh, system let us hope what happens Yes, uh, sir. My question uh, was again a tricky question. That uh, suppose uh, a post Dalai Lama scenario, if we see, uh, if even if there is a reincarnation of Dalai Lama, it will take a few years, you know, for the new Dalai Lama to take over things. Yeah. Until that time, we will have Karmapa only. But as far as the Karmapa issue is concerned, there are two Karmapas. One is in the Kalingpong and one who stays in uh, the Ramshala. So yeah. do you think that before Dalai Lama, uh, uh, you know, uh, create that vacuum, uh, we, uh, Indian government will be able to solve this Karmapa issue within India? And definitely. Indian government is working on sorting out this issue because Karmapa belongs to one of the most important monasteries of India, which is in Sikkim, it's Rumtek. And uh, he is uh, highly respected in India, especially along the Himalayan belt. Uh, he is a very important uh, religious figure for uh, around one crore people who live in, in uh, you know, this 4,000 kilometer long Himalayan range. He is important, no doubt. But uh, let me say whatever my knowledge of understanding of Tibetan system is, Karmapa is not and can never be a replacement for Dalai Lama. He does not qualify. His position culturally and socially does not permit him to play the role of Dalai Lama. He can play like many other political leaders, religious leaders. He can play a very important uh, role in uh, the Tibetan system as a highly respected uh, uh, religious uh, personality. But uh, I doubt uh, there is any scope for a Karmapa to replace Dalai Lama, I think that is beyond uh, question and beyond negotiations about uh, even within the society. But surely he he because he is respected and uh, he has a good role to play, and because Tibet will need a a respected figure, uh, so he his role will be important. But I as you said, the next Dalai Lama. When he is identified, he will be three, four, five, six years age. And according to the Tibetan system, even a Dalai Lama will acquire his political role only when he is he reaches adulthood, which means after 18. So next 18 years after this Dalai Lama passes away will be a period of vacuum. But Dalai Lama has been quite uh, brilliant. Uh, he has not left those uh, vacuums. Uh, he has prepared in a huge way uh, and quite successfully to create a system which will be in a position to, to, to fill up for the absence of physical absence of Dalai Lama. Uh, they have a, an elected parliament, an elected president who is called Sikyong. They have a judiciary. 
they have all the bureaucracy the tibet uh, the central tibetan administration is there in dharamsala which uh, has uh, almost every department of a government you know except rail mail and jail uh, there is practically every other department in this government so it's very capable of running the system in the ab physical absence of uh, a, an adult dalai lama uh, so that there is hardly any problem about it the governments like american government and many governments have already given very clear uh, indication that they will not allow china to impose its own choice of the dalai lama on the people of tibet or on tibet because recently there was a tibet policy and support act 2020 which was passed uh, by american uh, congress in the days of uh, president trump but it was a bipartisan and uh, both parties overwhelmingly supported it and there is a law now in america which uh, makes it mandatory for any uh, other next president of america to support the real dalai lama who is elected selected by the tibetan community and which has obligation to contest and challenge china if ever china tries to impose its own dalai lama so same is the situation in european parliament european governments european union too has a very similar opinion <coughs> so i don't think uh, it is going to be easy for china to to overrun the whole system so we can hope that uh, we wish the dalai lama a very long life uh, but because he is a human being and he has those limitations of uh, of uh, the human life so even uh, after his uh, present life uh, china will try to occupy but i doubt uh, china will be permitted uh, a very easy walk over or will have its own way right sir okay so uh yeah uh, so if you could brief us about uh, the current political situation in, with respect to taiwan hmm. uh, and hmm. nancy pelosi's uh, visit uska kya impact hai or kya aspects hai, sir that would be great you know as far as the <coughs> sorry as far as the visit of uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi is concerned his visit to Taiwan it has no doubt created a lot of uh, it has ruffled uh, so many feathers uh, China is uh, not only angry China is mad because of his visit but a few basic things is that as uh, uh, as the position the constitutional position of uh, uh, Madam Nancy Pelosi is concerned in the American system she has every right to travel anywhere in the world and especially in a democratic country like Taiwan, who are friendly, uh, she has every right to travel there. So she did it. Uh, whether uh, the policies of foreign policy of the current American government uh, is in tune with it or not, she has every legal right to visit. She did it. She used this right. And in, in the process, China uh, demonstrated its uh, anger. Uh, rather anger was a little more than anger it was it went into the limits of being mad so china behaved very irrational and aggressive uh, in reaction to her visit so this has created uh, many uh, problems and it has raised many questions even for those countries which are not concerned directly um, for example a, a country like india uh, it has uh, uh, because china now wants india to take a very clear stand whether uh, it is supporting uh, or india should oppose the visit of uh, nancy, madam nancy pelosi uh, and china india should announce that india believes in one china policy and uh, it wants that it has nothing to do with taiwan so i think this is demanding too much and uh, I have my very much doubts that even the, in the given uh, international political situation, uh, which is very, very different from 10 years ago, and uh, a, a situation in which China, India has uh, now far more clear role uh, to play, 
and far more uh, I, I i would say a clearer environment to make its opinion about china so indian government has uh, very rightly uh, not committed to what china wants it to uh, india has played a very uh, a very well studied uh, independent uh, role without taking pa uh, side but india has very clearly said that uh, no one should change the uh, uh, the status quo by force which has only one meaning uh, which means that india has not supported china's uh, act of using uh, its army its navy its air force to threaten uh, the taiwan but all said and done uh, as the scenario is developing international scenario is developing india's choice are going to become more limited in future and uh, because one is china has the way china has behaved to india rather if i can use the term against india and taken very very strong stands india is not obliged to oblige china and moreover india has to now india is more obliged to protect its own interests and those interests uh, as a person like me uh, looks at those interests are now more far more aligned in favor of taiwan than uh, uh, it, it might have been 20 30 years ago so i see that india uh, has uh, been uh, if you know it it has been pushed to or situations have uh, changed to a, a situation uh, uh, to to a position where india uh, is in a position to take more uh, resolute stand vis-a-vis uh, -vis taiwan and one thing is very clear that uh, in view of china's aggression against india and its attitude towards countries like taiwan and japan and australia and south uh, korea vietnam to me it appears that these countries are now obliged they have hardly any other choice than to join hands and be prepared to form a kind of formal or informal alliance which will help them to take decisions if china attacks one of these countries or more of these countries so india will have a very clear choice to make india will have to join hands with these countries in its own interest because if china invades taiwan today and uh, gets its way through so that you know leaves the ground open for china to do it next to india so india is the very much second candidate for this kind of aggression so india has no reason to be indifferent to this situation india has no reason to see taiwan <coughs> india has no reason to see taiwan being threatened and uh, going unchallenged uh, so india will have to take a very clear stand and uh, the only choice with india is to stand by taiwan to stand by vietnam to stand by japan to stand by south korea to stand by australia and all these countries have a very very big reason to be together and whether america takes a stand or not these countries will have to be very very reliable allies of each other in 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 near future and later future thank you very much sir vijay sir uh, thank you very much and uh... so thank you so much sir i think it was great interacting with uh, you vijay sir uh, bahut achhi jankari mili aur uh, aage bhi hum continue rakhenge hopefully we'll have you here some other time as well and uh, also in our spaces if you could join on twitter it would be uh, really nice and uh, very enlightening uh, china uh, or other geopolitics issue we keep discussing those topics as well so uh, thank you so much uh, yeah. aur ji aur main apne viewers se thodi si guzarish karna chahunga ki hame subscribe kijiye like kijiye share kijiye 
ताकि हम ज्यादा से ज्यादा और भी काफी ज्ञानवर्धक चीजें लेके आ सके बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू जय हिंद थैंक यू थैंक यू सर जय हिंद थैंक यू राइट ओके अमित जी नमस्कार हम हर रात साढ़े नौ बजे ट्विटर स्पेसिस पे लाइव होते हैं हमारे साथ जुड़िए और विभिन्न देश विदेश की खबरों पर अपनी राय प्रकट कीजिए इसके साथ ही हमारे यूट्यूब चैनल टीम न्यूज आवर को भी सब्सक्राइब कीजिए शेयर कीजिए लाइक कीजिए और अपने कमेंट्स भी छोड़िए धन्यवाद